Welcome to another episode of Behind the Science on Location. I'm your host, Jennifer Fournier. Protein misfolding is believed to be the primary cause of diseases such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and Huntington's, just to name a few. Understanding protein function as well as misfunction is therefore critical in finding cures or treatments for these diseases. In this episode of Behind the Science, let's head to a lab at the University of Texas to see what they are doing in regards to understanding the structure and function of proteins. So I'm here at the University of Texas at Dallas visiting the chemistry and biochemistry department and they say that everything's bigger in Texas. So let's see if that applies to the data. Hi Kyle. Oh, hi Jen. I am so glad I found you because I was just outside your lab looking at a poster that you were doing, which was really interesting. It looked like you're looking at enzymes as targets for protein therapeutics. And I heard that you're doing some work on humanizing the bacterial enzyme or bacterializing the human enzyme. What is that all about? So it's really interesting. We actually are interested in understanding how the, uh, the enzyme, the human enzyme mm -hmm. can work and as well as the bacterial enzyme can work and shrinking tumors. Cool, but can I make an observation here? On your poster, I see that these two structures of the enzyme in crystallography look very similar, but as I'm reading through, it looks like they have different activities. How can that be? So we have this hypothesis that these enzymes behave differently while in solution. So we use a technique called hydrogen deuterium exchange to understand that how they behave dynamically. All right, well, that sounds complicated. Could you tell me a little bit more about HDX? Well, I've seen behind the science before, so let's take this to the whiteboard. Let's go to the whiteboard. The protein is immersed in a physiologically relevant buffer and another identical buffer, replacing only the water for heavy water, which replaces hydrogen for deuterium. Using heavy water allows for the hydrogens located on the protein's backbone amide to catalytically exchange with the deuterium from heavy water freely at room temperature. We take advantage of this property to look at differences in deuterium incorporation when the protein is exposed to a ligand. When the ligand binds, the exchange pattern changes for a region of the protein. We can identify these regions using mass spectrometry. Well, Kyle, I do love a good whiteboard, but what I love even better is to see science in action. And my guess is you have one of those instruments somewhere in this lab, right? You are absolutely right. It's right over here, and in fact, I spend most of my time in there. So let's take a walk over. Let's head over. Here it is, my home away from home. All right, let's go on in. Well, Kyle, they say everything's bigger in Texas, and they weren't joking. This is a really big instrument. You are absolutely right. For this instrument, we have three components. Okay. This automated robot that allows us to do our exchange. We take it over here where the robot injects, mm -hmm. where the proteins are cut up and eluded over a chromatography gradient. Okay. And it sends it over here to the mass spectrometer where we, where we can measure mass to charge. Okay, so you're taking a look at the peptides in the mass spectrometer. Exactly. All right, now one thing I noticed that I don't see on every HDX instrument is this automated platform. Why do you have this? So we have this automated platform to control time and temperature, okay. which is, allows us to make reproducible data and also to make our experiments more efficient, where that we makes, can run longer times. Okay, that makes sense. Well, this is a big instrument, so my guess is you have some big data that goes with it. You're absolutely right. Let's take this to the whiteboard so we can take a look at some data. Sounds good. These are sample uptake plots for deuterium incorporation over time. We get hundreds of these for a single protein in an HDX experiment. What you see is human and bacterial alone in blue with ligand in green. You can see some of the regions have large differences while others we see no change at all. What we learned from this was the bacterial enzyme moves less during catalysis than the human enzyme and we learned which regions specifically are moving. Well, HDX is a really powerful tool for understanding the dynamics of proteins. You're right, Jen. Now that you know how it works, let's get you to work. Let's go. Understanding the malfunction of proteins is critical to developing drugs that work to target these misbehaviors and work to whip them back into shape. HDX is a unique and powerful tool for analyzing proteins and how they interact with drugs. For more information on the HDX work that you saw today, check out the link below and join us next time for another episode of Behind the Science on Location. <laughs>